Um, I have to thank uh, my friend Dave Gimmel for trusting me to present his, uh, his paper. Uh, he's very sorry that he cannot be here, as uh, uh, Madame Moret already mentioned, due to a small incident. And uh, I feel like uh, a character in Cyrano de Bergerac, where somebody is mumbling the wishes of love uh, instead of the other one into the ear of the, of the lady. So I will try to do my best. And uh, chances are that uh, any specific questions I will be unable to, to discuss in detail. But in any case, uh, as Marie-Christine uh, Morel has already mentioned, um, I think that Dave Gimmer has the extraordinary merit of being one of the first to try to modernize the views of uh, Alexander Wagner's operating using uh, liposomes and mice that is in fact exacerbates. And uh, what uh, he really wanted to do was to present his results, his uh, hypothesis and his results, showing how in hydrothermal settings, not vents, hydrothermal settings and environments, you could in fact encapsulate quite easily a, a number of uh, molecules that are being synthesized due to cycles in hydration and dehydration. So um, he actually uh, would like to acknowledge the uh, uh, thank you. The contribution of Marie-Christine Morel, uh, Laura da Silva, other colleagues, uh, Suda, Amani, Veronica Guzman, and so on, and the research is supported by the American uh, Justice Agency. So, um, they very kindly started his paper with a discussion that uh, um, Rafi Falk and myself published a couple of years ago. Rafi was the last uh, also that uh, Erwin Müller had, and I was very close to Alexander Ivanov Shoprari. So we decided to combine our perspectives to see what was the reason of the big debate uh, that developed between the two of them. And uh, basically, one was defending the idea of a single RNA DNA molecule, the other was defending the idea of an ensemble of uh, molecules interacting. And what um, what they were trying to see is if we could combine both views and develop a more effective perspective. So, um, uh, with this in mind, what uh, he wanted to uh, precisely to relate all the ideas to the, to the origins of life. And what are the possible settings for his scheme? Well, the fact that you can have a hydrothermal environment, that not, not a hydrothermal vent, but rather an environment, and that the primitive world was in such kind of, uh, of environment. So here you will have a nitrogen and CO2 rich atmosphere that's consistent with the views of some of our uh, friends who are planetologists. Uh, you will have thermal energy coming from a very active uh, um, crust and cortex uh, going on. You will have a salty ocean that can in some cases inhibit the formation of liposomes, in others not. And uh, of course you will have as well fresh water ponds. So how do we simulate all these conditions under laboratory um, uh, we under laboratory possibilities, and, or as he had been doing, how can one find in nature places where we have exactly the same type of situation? And Kamchatka uh, is a place that uh, they human likes to go quite often, and you can see that uh, the origin of life can be a risky field to to undertake because uh, so far nobody has fallen into into one of these uh, situations. But it might be interesting to see what happens. Um, the reasonable idea that he's trying to develop is that the earliest form of life is something like RNA uh, polymers, both as a catalyst and as a way to store and replicate genetic information. And uh, there are some experimental, there is experimental evidence of how we can actually um, enhance or develop more properties of RNA molecules. And specifically, you can select under in vitro conditions RNA molecules that bind to a specific ligands after doing cellulose experiment. And of course, uh, you can isolate new ribosomes from large pool of random sequences. And there's a very good experimental support for these possibilities. And the question is how can a mixture of RNA like polymers be synthesized? And the basic assumption that uh, is doing is that once you have the nucleotides, the activated nucleotides, you can actually proceed to go in this direction. And the uh, hypothetical scenario that he is proposing is that there must have been non enzymatic processes by which potentially catalytic and replicating polymers were produced to initiate life. RNA is a good model to study such uh, uh, 
uh, polymers. The polymers were encapsulated into membranous compartments by self assembly to form vast numbers of protocells, and of course, different to the ones we just heard. Uh, the compartments represented microscopic experiment and natural version of combinatorial chemistry. A rare few happened to contain systems of polymers that would catalyze their own uh, reproduction. Person there, I would say replication, and these were selected by competition to evolve toward the first cellular life. So you have a set of assumptions that are consistent with some of the prebiotic scenarios that we have. Um, the physical pro properties of hydrothermal sites, for instance, the Moon Pass Hill at Mount Lassen in California, uh, where you have exactly uh, this kind of environment, and this has been described in a paper published a couple of years ago in Proceedings by uh, Armin Mundi. Kanya and his uh, associates. And this is precisely the kind of environment that you have. So you have the pods, you have uh, cycles, and you have uh, the clays, you have uh, high temperatures, very low pHs, uh, which is something that um, is required for this kind of, of situation. Um, you have wet and dry cycles, whenever you have the hydration due to evaporation, to the heat, to, to the solar. Uh, heating or just because the place evaporates uh, on itself. And uh, the favorable properties of volcanic hydrothermal environments in general will include organic compounds that accumulate in hydrothermal ponds, the wet dry cycles concentrate potential reactants, you could have condensation reactions occurring in low water activity environments, elevated temperatures provides activation energy and the membranes <coughs> uh, components assembled from amplifiers uh, from lipidic molecules available. And what kind of reactions may occur in this kind of condition? Well, on the one hand, you could have the hydrolysis of polymers, and the polymers that uh, uh, very quickly go into the monomers. You could have, of course, the, con the opposite reaction. You could have the condensation in which you have monomers, dehydration direction, and you get polymers. And the, the, the ideal situation is where you have actually a steady state that can allow hydrolysis condensation or monomers and polymers if you have a kind of trap. Basically, that's the idea. So, the idea is the basic hypothesis that you have mononucleotides that will actually lead into RNA like uh, polymers. Um, the basic mechanism is why you have this intra dehydration is that you will have a nucleophilic attack uh, from the ribose, uh, the orange uh, from the ribose here is phosphorus, and eventually you get to the uh, phosphodiester board over here. There's a small detail there that needs to be correct, but I think otherwise, no problem. So, uh, the model system that uh, uh, David and his group are using requires a solution of AMP, UMP, AMP, plus uh, or AMP, UMP. Uh, the polymer will be poly A, poly U, the poly A, A U complex, in the double strand with RNA um, monomers, uh, polymers. The organizing matrix will be multilamer liquid crystals that can concentrate and organize monomers. I will, you will see them in the future. Picture and the polymeric products are encapsulated to form protocells, and this has been described recently in a paper published in the Journal of Molecular Evolution. The, uh, in order to try this under laboratory conditions, he has designed a simulation chamber in which you have a CO2 atmosphere, kind of aerobic, at a temperature of 85 uh, degrees, um, acidic pH range, and hydration and dehydration cycles. And then we have the uh, photograph of the, of the simulation chamber, you have the CO2 atmosphere, you have the heat source, you have the hydration cycle, the water coming from here, and here you have uh, the dehydration with the elevated temperature at 85 centigrade and uh, with carbon dioxide coming all the time. Um, and so you really have an aerobic uh, situ uh, situation. You have the rehydration of the, of the entire system, just adding water. And uh, here you have the simulation of the, of the environment. The basic idea is you will have the monomers in a solution. Um, in a, if you want to develop an organizing matrix, that will be actually formed by the liquids you are adding to, to the system. Um, so when you have dehydration, when the amplifilic molecule is right in the presence of solid molecules, the solutes are captured between layers in a multilamer matrix that will become very evident in the following picture. So here you have the, the liquids forming liposomes, micelles, whatever, and then when you dehydrate the situation, you this collapse and actually form 
this uh, lamina, these small uh, sheets that uh, actually had trapped the monomers between them, and these were polymerized right away. You have here, for instance, the false polypid vesicles in water. These are pre structured images. And, but once you dry them, you, you have these multilaminar lipid plates. They, in fact, trap the monomer in this case, which is the nucleotide monomer, the adenosine monophosphate. And uh, the, so the situation you are getting is something like this. You have here the lipidic monolaminar, and you have trapped between, you can see the A and P. Um, as monomers, as a set of monomers perfectly organized in a special situation. One can test, one can measure the efficiency of this polymerization reaction using X-ray diffraction, and uh, we actually have here the pictures demonstrating that um, if you have only only the lipids uh, with no with no AMP, with the AMP not yet polymerized, and the polymerization you actually see very distinct. Uh, Images uh, that show you that the, the, the dehydration is taking place. So, the basic uh, idea is shown in this molecular simulation is that you have the lipids here, you have the lipids here, and you have the condensation reaction just because they are activated and quite close to, to each other. Um, once you do this, uh, the question is whether these mononucleotides undergo polymerization in the simulated hydrothermal conditions. You have many wet and dry cycles, you have the product, and you can analyze them either by delta electrophoresis or by nanopore analysis. He has performed this. Here you see the details. You see that you go up to um, different uh, 